Hi art lovers, Tristina Dietz Elms here. And in this video, I'm going to show you how I use Pebio's glazing resin to coat a painting. This was a painting that I did with Pebio's liquid oil paints. And then I put a nice coat of resin on top of it. And you'll notice that the resin did not drip over the sides. Why is that? Well, that's because I used the glazing resin, which is a thicker resin from Pebio that's gonna go to the edges and then make a rounded side to it without having to put tape on it. Now, let me describe for you the art supplies that we're going to be using. First, you need to have a painting that you've finished and is fully dry. The painting I showed you earlier was with Pebio's liquid oil paints. I let those sit for about seven days before I go ahead and put resin on them. What I have here are acrylic paint pours, and I leave those for about three days before I'll pour resin on them. Specifically, if you've used silicone oil, you need to coat your painting with some sort of a sealing layer. In this case, I used Bindex. Bindex is a thin medium that you can paint on, and I use a soft brush like this to paint it onto the surface in order to be sure that we've sealed in any of the residue of the silicone from an acrylic pour. I do that because that way I can be sure that I won't get any pits in the resin that I pour on it, which can happen from having little bits of oil or leftover silicone on your painting. Another thing we're gonna use is we're going to make sure before we put our resin on that we level our artwork so that as it's drying, the resin doesn't creep off the sides. You're going to wanna use some sort of torch. Here I have a small torch and here's a little bit bigger professional grade torch. Or in lieu of that, you can also use a heat gun. The heat gun will also help you to push the resin around if you need it to go to one side. I find that helpful. Then we're gonna have stir sticks. In addition, I'll use a plastic dropper if I need to, to put resin just in a certain place. And I use a plastic cup to mix the resin in. Now over here, you'll see some acetone and rubbing alcohol. Those are for cleanup. If you need to clean up the resin, acetone is your best bet for cleaning up the resin. But if you just need a quick wipe up, rubbing alcohol will also work for you. And I have, of course, paper towels and gloves. Now there are two types of glazing resin from Pebio. One is the bio resin. What's nice about this is 40% of it is organic and it's an organic carbon that's in there. This bio resin is excellent for coating and it's thick enough it'll go to the edges and it'll give you that nice rounded edge. The bio resin will set up in about 10 minutes. If you need more working time, then the original glazing resin from Pebio has about a 45 minute work time. So for larger surfaces, you may want to consider the original Pebio glazing resin. Here's what the bio resin looks like and you can put plants in it, you can use it for molding, and of course in our case I'm going to be showing you how to coat this painting. So let's get started. The first step is I've covered my work surface with some freezer paper and now we're going to take the painting that had silicone oil on it and we're going to clean that off. So I'm using a shop towel to do that and I'm going to give it a very good rub. Move your towel around into different places so that you're absorbing everything that you can and be sure that you get all around the edges as well. Now this painting is nice and shiny and ready to receive a coating of some sort of acrylic either spray or acrylic medium. When I use acrylic spray, I do it outside and I use two to three coats of the spray in order to be sure that it's nice and sealed. Because this Bindex is a little bit thicker, I can use just one coat and I don't have to take it outside to do it. So I put a little bit of that on there. You can see it's nice and creamy. And just do this. 
Make sure that you get it all around the edges and all over the top. Now that you're gonna notice that this looks all cloudy. However, if it's a gloss medium, it will dry perfectly clear. Now I'm gonna set this aside to dry for at least 24 hours. I'm gonna clean off this brush in water. This painting already has a layer of Bindex acrylic medium on it, so it is dry and ready to receive our resin. For the next step, you want to level your artwork so that when you've poured your resin on, it doesn't creep and go over the side. Here I'm using a button level, which has a really cool little bubble inside it. And this helps you to level in any direction. I like to raise up my work surface so that in the event that any resin falls off, it doesn't creep underneath and stick it to the surface. <laughs> so here I'm just using a little color mixing cup, or I also like to use the little kitchen cups for that. And here, let's put this on here, and I can see that the bubble is off. So what do I use to level it with? I use sticks and I use toothpicks. Okay, now the bubble is in the center, and I am not going to move that. That is now level. Now let me show you why I love the Pebio resins. They come in a box. It has everything in it that you need in order to mix the resin except for a cup. So here we go. I'm gonna show you the different parts right now. We have instructions, which are super important. Please, please, please make sure you find the English part and read those <laughs> instructions. It's very important, especially important because with the bioresin, there is a very quick cure time of about 10 minutes for the reaction to start. So you're gonna be mixing this up and pouring it pretty quickly. You're not gonna have a 45 minute work time, which is what you have with the regular glazing resin. You're gonna receive some gloves. So if it's your first time using resin, there will be a set of gloves in there. You have your measuring cups. So one for the part A and part B. This is an epoxy resin that requires a resin part A and a hardener part B. Now you'll notice that there's a difference in the size of these two containers. This has 100 milliliters in it, and this has 50 milliliters in it. Why is that important? Well, different resins mix at a different rate. So this is a resin that mixes two parts resin to one part hardener, two parts A to one part B. That is why we have different size containers. But even if you receive them in the same size container, make sure that you read the directions and you know for the resin that you're using how much hardener and how much of the resin you're going to need. And then they also give us some sticks to work with. And remember what I said before, acetone is what you can use to clean up with or you're rubbing alcohol. I've laid down here a piece of wax paper because I like to mix my resin on top of wax paper and throw the wax paper away when I'm done so that I can reuse this butcher paper several times. Oh, and notice also up here, I have a plastic dropper. That's in case I want to use a plastic dropper to put a little bits of resin exactly where I want it. Noticed that some people on the internet do not wear gloves when they mix their resin. I recommend that you always wear gloves and also with this bio resin, quick cure and any quick cure resin, you're gonna find that because it, it cures quickly, it is going to heat up fast. And if you don't wear gloves, you're gonna feel a burning sensation on your hands if any of it gets on your hands. Now, another thing about this quick acting glazing resin is that it's going to cure in about six hours. So a normal resin, like the other version of the glazing resin, will take about 24 hours to cure. I get asked often, how much resin am I going to need to coat the surface that I have? Well, inside your instructions, it tells you how to calculate how much 
resin you're going to need in order to coat that surface. And down in the comments of this video, I will put that information for knowing how much of this resin you're going to need to mix in order to coat this size. I am going to measure 20 milliliters of the resin and 10 milliliters of the hardener to coat this painting. So here I'm going to pour it to the 20 milliliter line and I use a separate cup for the 20 milliliter and for the 10 milliliter. Then I put the lids back on. And then here, this one is going to be 10 milliliters. So the little lines are on there and I can see when it gets to the 10 or the 20. Okay, there we go. Let's go ahead and put this into the cup. And I'm going to use one of the sticks that they gave us in the kit. And then here's the hardener. Now remember, after putting those two together, I have 10 minutes. You see that I had some of the resin go down the side of the cup here. So I wanna be sure that I get that resin and put it down inside with the other resin to be sure I've got the right amount. And here we go. Now, how do I know when it's done? I usually mix it for 30 to 60 seconds for a small amount. If it's more, then I usually do it a full 60 seconds. And I like to use a clear cup to mix because what's gonna happen is when the two parts come together, they form a catalyst action that makes the solution cloudy. Then once the resin goes clear again, you know that the action has occurred and it's ready to pour. I can already feel it starting to get thick. <laughs> so that resin is now crystal clear and it's ready. And here we go. I'm gonna start in the middle and around near the edges, not all the way to the edge because I'm going to push the resin toward the edge. That's how I keep it from going off the side is I gently encourage it to go to the edge. But because it is a thick resin, the glazing resin is a thick resin, it won't go over the edge. Now I've had people ask me if there's a smell with this resin. Any smell is very minimal. And if you have any allergies at all, I recommend that you wear some sort of face mask with it. But the smell is very, very low odor. Now, there are a few bubbles, although most of the bubbles have already come out. And what you can do for the bubbles is you can either gently heat it like this. You want some warmth. You don't want it to be too close because otherwise it'll push it over the sides. You can spray the surface with a spray alcohol and that will help to burst the bubbles. Or I'm going to use my torch to gently go over the surface and get rid of the bubbles. Sometimes when you heat it, it can pull away from the edge. So I'm just encouraging it to go back toward the edge. Beautiful. Now to clean my stick, I just wipe it with a paper towel and set it off to the side and let it dry. If you have extra resin left over, I'm gonna show you what you can do with that. And also it's beginning, just beginning to get warm. Let me grab another piece of artwork here and I'm gonna show you what I do with leftover resin. So I take the leftover resin and here's one of my paintings and I put the leftover resin on the surface. Because this is a thick resin, I can use it as a sculptural element also in my artwork. So there we go. It's going to leave those spots. When it dries, those spots are going to be 
raised up and give some extra dimension to the artwork. Now in order to clean these cups, I'm going to pour a tiny bit of acetone into there. Or if you had your alcohol, you could just pour rubbing alcohol into there. Make sure you still have your gloves on when you do it. <laughs> and then take your paper towel and you can wipe out the cups like that. And after they're wiped out, you can take them to the sink and wash them with soap and water. I hope you enjoyed that video and go get yourself some resin. I invite you to subscribe to my channel and I look forward to your comments. Thanks for watching.